Good morning, church. Oh, it's good to see your faces again this morning and, uh, and to see some who haven't been here for a while. Good to see you. Um, Urbano, nice to see you. Happy New Year, my friend. Yeah, good to see you. And um, yeah, we're going to uh, worship. Just look at that slide. Made for God's pleasure. Good question, Larry. <laughs> what is worship? And um, some interesting answers. None of them wrong, per se. But, um, you know, Ashley, what you said was pretty much sums up, I think, what worship is. Um, I want to debunk a few things today. Might upset you, I don't know. It, it'll challenge you. It challenged me when I was doing this. Yeah. You know, it was, um, it was Friday evening. And I just landed at Christchurch Airport. I came through the gates and... Uh, there was somebody there to greet and meet me. We hopped in the car and they took me off to the Majestic Theatre in town. It was Friday evening and it was the first night of the Promise Keepers Conference in Christchurch. And when I arrived, I, I met a few of the other speakers um, and then made my way into the auditorium. There were around a thousand men in the auditorium gathered. And at that time, they were just sort of catching up and chatting to one another and, you know, doing what people do before something happens. And then the time came. The band came on to stage. And then the choir and their matching T-shirts all came and stood in the corner. And then it began. The band started playing. The choir started singing. And then a host of a thousand men's voices chimed in to the song, crown him with many crowns, the lamb upon the throne. It was so powerful, so passionate, so amazing. I, I just was overcome with tears. And it was so incredible that I dialed on my phone. I dialed Sarah and said, babe, you've got to listen to this. You've got to listen to this. It was incredible. What an amazing moment of worship that was. But you know, worship's not all about singing. A few years ago, I was sitting in a lecture room at Bible College. And we were studying the book of Romans at that time. And my lecturer, an, an elderly gentleman, was so passionate about the Word of God. And uh, he started to unpack the first couple of verses in the book of Romans. And as he unpacked it, he did it so well and so passionately that I just spontaneously stood up in class and started applauding him. And then I burst into tears because what he was telling me was impacting me so much. What an incredible moment of worship that was. But you know, worship's not all about teaching. It's not all about singing. It's not all about teaching. You know what disheartens me at times, and, and I've done this myself, and so this is a challenge to me as, as much as it is to anyone else, is that so often I'll come to a Sunday service, whether it's here or at another church, and sometimes I'll go away thinking to myself and complaining, I didn't get anything out of that today. Why can't we sing more songs like that? I don't think the preacher should preach on this or that. I can't believe that that person didn't speak to me today. No one ever notices what I do in church. Here's the first thing you need to know. Worship isn't about getting anything. It's about giving everything. Worship isn't about getting anything. It's about giving everything to God. Those are attitudes. They make us judges of activity rather than active participants in adoring the God that saved us. You know, one of the things that's a struggle today is this thing of consumerism. And let's just put a tagline, Christian consumerism. Let's call it that. Christian consumerism. Um, it sometimes defines how we do worship. In other words, 
The number of ministries that we have for you to get engaged in is important. The size and quality of the building. The popularity of the pastors. The style of our music. And the obvious determination to make people happy. We have in many ways, friends, become insensitive to God's presence who should be the focus of our worship. What well, personal struggles, selfish ambition, bickering amongst one another, worship wars are all indications that we desperately need to return to the heart of worship. And when we return to the heart of worship, and when we see ourselves in light of who God is, we get a better perspective on what worship is. And when we do that, we will seek to exalt him to his rightful place in our lives, in our families, and in our church. Our purpose, friends, in this life is to worship and to glorify God. That's our purpose. We've been made for his pleasure. We were made for God's fellowship, to worship him. And to fulfill any other purpose in your life is to fail to fulfill the purpose of your life. The purpose of your life is to worship and glorify God. And to fail at that is to fail at fulfilling the purpose in your life. You might not like that. <laughs> worship is my response to God's love. Worship is giving back to God. Worship is more than music. It engulfs every aspect of my life. So I'm going to give you five things really quick. First one is this. Worship is focusing my attention on God. Hebrews 12, 1 to 2. If you've got it in your Bibles, you can follow along. As for us, we have all of these great witnesses who encircle us like clouds, that's talking about the saints that have gone before. They encircle us. So we must let go of every wound that has peered us, pierced us and the sin that we so easily fall into. Then we will be able to run life's marathon race with passion and determination. For the path has already been marked out before us. We look away from the natural realm and we fasten our gaze onto Jesus who birthed faith within us and who leads us forward into faith's perfection. His example is this. Because his heart was focused on the joy of knowing that you would be his, he endured the agony of the cross and conquered its humiliation and now sits exalted at the right hand of the throne of God. Wow. Worship is the act of loving God back. Thank you, Ashley. You said that. It's our primary objective, our highest priority. It's our number one purpose in life. So what does worship look like? Worship looks like focusing all of my life on Jesus. It's my response to God's love. You know, God made the first move, didn't he? He created us. He saves us, forgives us, blesses us, and protects us. And as a result, we respond in worship. It's my offering to God. So number one, worship is focusing my attention on God. Number two, worship is giving back to God. And whenever you give back to God, whenever you offer anything to God, that's called worship. Larry, there it is. What do you give back to God? You give Him your love. Mark 12, verse 30 says this, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. So he wants you to love him in three ways when we look at that verse. Number one, he wants you to love him thoughtfully. Love him with your mind. Think about his love. Think about his goodness. Think about his grace. 
how it has brought you through life. So number one, thoughtfully. Number two, passionately. With all your strength, with all of your abilities. God wants your attention, your affection, and your ability. And the greatest expression of our love is often displayed in our attention. But thirdly, God wants you to love Him passionately with all your heart and soul. He passionately loves us and wants us to passionately love Him back. But again, the greatest expression of love is displayed in our attention. Remember the first time you fell in love? You just couldn't stop thinking about that person, could you? Phone calls multiple times a day. Didn't matter how far away you lived, you made the trip, didn't you, to go see them. The first time you fell in love. Oh, and you did things that you probably don't do today. You bought them gifts and flowers and all of those fun things, right? You did that stuff. You hugged and you talked about life. You know, God's love is that kind of love. It's always focused on us. It's always focused on us. So secondly, worship is giving back to God. Thirdly, worship is focusing our attention on God. Here's a challenge for the year. Have you established a quiet time each day to be with God? Matthew 6 verse 6 says, But you, when you pray, go into your room. When you have shut the door... Pray to your Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Have you established a quiet time this year? Number two, develop a constant conversation with God. Worship Him continually. Number three, express your affection to God. 1 John 4.19 says, We love Him because He first loved us. Tell God you love Him. He said it first. Hosea 6 verse 6, I don't want your sacrifices, says God. I want your love. I don't want your offerings. I want you to know me. God wants you to know Him and love Him. Romans 6.13 says, So then refuse to answer. It's called to surrender your body as a tool for wickedness. Instead, passionately answer God's call to keep yielding your body to Him as one who has now experienced resurrection life. You live now for His pleasure, ready to be used for His noble purpose. He doesn't want ritual, regulation, rules, Religion. God wants relationship. Yeah? 34 years ago, a young boy stood in front of a young girl and said, I take you to be my lawfully wedded wife. I will love you through the good times, the bad times, through sickness, through health, and in death. And over those 34 years, that young boy and that young girl have loved one another. They've done business together. They brought up children together. They bought a home together. They've worshipped God together. They've prayed together. They've cried together. It's been a great 34 years, babe. (laughs) The greatest way to express your love to God It's by giving your life to Him, by yielding yourself to Him. Like in marriage, when you give yourself to your partner, the greatest expression of your love is to sacrifice yourself for the other person. The greatest way to express your love to God is by giving your life to Him. That's the essence of love. I give you my life. I surrender myself to you. I'm committing myself to you. Remember, it's always a response to God. God gave us life. He says, I want you 
to give yourself completely back to me. Here's the fourth thing. Worship is using my abilities for God. Colossians 3.23 And whatever you do, do it heartedly as to the Lord and not to men. Now this is a really important verse. If you get this, it will absolutely change your life. It helps you to understand that in order to worship God, you don't have to change the job you're doing. You just have to change who you're working for. When you change who you're working for, your work becomes worship. The trouble is, and, and this is nothing against what was said this morning, but there's been some bad teaching in the church. They've taught that actually, you know, there's eight different ways to worship God and you'll fit this one, this one, or this one. And we compartmentalize everything. Life and we compartmentalize worshiping God. But you see, worship, worship is when I surrender everything to God. Everything. Utterly everything. Everything, every area of my life. And I tell you, when you do that, not only does work become better, not only does family life become better, but church, when you come as someone who has surrendered everything to Christ, the roof comes off the building when we come to worship together, when we come to encourage one another, the roof is lifted. And like the host of a thousand men singing, crown them with many crowns, the place changes. We become a light to the community, to the nation, and to the world. Worship is using my abilities for God. And lastly, worship is giving everything to God. In life, it's not what you do that matters. It's who you do it for. Give it all to God. Your work can be turned to worship. You can do it for God. God doesn't want worship just to be something we do on a Sunday. He wants your whole life to worship God with your life. With your life. What is worship, Larry? What is worship? Worship is utter Total, complete surrender to God and to Christ who saved us. That is what worship is. Romans 12, 1. Take your everyday, it says, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. To offer your life is the essence of worship. Real purpose-driven living happens in the ordinary, routine, Monday things of real life. It's where you go. Whatever I'm doing, I'm doing it for you, God. And when you do that, your life becomes an act of worship. Real worship is a lifestyle. So here's the final question. What are you worshipping? Or who are you worshipping? Well, it's whatever you're giving your attention, your affection, and your abilities to. You may be worshipping your career. You may be worshipping making money. You might be worshipping retirement or pleasure. You might worship sex. You might worship another person. The greatest temptation of your life and the worst sin you could possibly commit is the temptation to worship something other than God. I challenge you today. I challenge you to make as the number one goal in your life before everything else getting to know and love God because that brings Him pleasure. And you were made for His pleasure. And when we live like this, when we gather to worship together, 
It changes absolutely everything. Can I get the worship team back up on stage, please? And I'm going to pray. And we're going to sing again. I'm not saying that's the only act of worship, but we're going to sing. And we're going to sing differently. We're going to surrender it all to Him. Father, we thank You that You first loved us. That You surrendered Your life that we might have life. You saved us. You protect us. You're our God. And Lord, we want to offer our lives to you today afresh. Committing ourselves to you afresh and anew this morning. As an act of worship to you. So Father, we're going to sing together. Lord, I give you my heart. And we're going to surrender everything to you. Amen. And as we're singing the song this morning, we just stand, we're going to worship together. But as we sing, I mean, maybe this morning you sense the Spirit of God speaking to you. I think there's a couple of ways that this can go. Number one, maybe you haven't completely given your life to Jesus yet and that is something that you need to do you feel the spirit of God just working in your life and you need to do that well during this song I just invite you to come we've got a prayer team here this morning we've got some elders here this morning we'd love to talk and pray with you well maybe after hearing this you go you know what I put my life into compartments and God's just been one of those compartments. And God, I, I, need to, I need to smash the compartments down. I need to break every box. And I need to have you invade every aspect of my life. And, and if you're just sensing you want some prayer for that this morning, then come forward. We'll pray with you this morning. God will do something in your life. I know he will. The Spirit of God is here. It's the Spirit of God is moving amongst us. And he wants to work in our lives. So I invite you, just as we're singing, come. Come and we'll pray. Thanks, Mitch. Hey, thanks for joining us uh, today on our 5 p.m. live service. I'm Pastor Gary, and uh, I wonder how you answered that question around worship today. I pray that as you heard the message today, that maybe it shaped your thinking a little bit. And what I pray is that each and every one of you will completely surrender totally and utterly to Jesus Christ and give your life as an act of worship back to God. Because I promise you that when you do that, your life will be different. Your work will be different. Your family will be different. Your friendships will be different. Everything you do in life will change if you completely surrender to Jesus. And so that's the message today. It's all about worshiping God we were made for his pleasure. Let me pray for you as we end the service today. Father, we thank you that you have been present with us today, that you have spoken to us through the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the transformation that's happening in each one of us. We pray, Lord, that you continue to journey with us as people, that we would come to know you more and more every day. Help us, heal us, and direct us in life, we pray. Amen. So as you go, know that you find your hope in Christ, you're transformed by Christ and empowered through Christ to change the world. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you next week on our 5 p.m.